What's up YouTube? Welcome to the channel and this is the first of many videos to come. I'm recording this intro after already making the video for a few reasons, but the main reason being there was just too much to crop out. I mean I literally had about 30 minutes of me just ranting about Miatas, but that's, uh, that's not the goal, at least for this vlog today. And don't expect anything super entertaining in this video. Uh, I just wanted to get one out there to kind of break the ice and kind of experiment with um, the software I'm using to edit and of course using this new camera. There won't be any real track footage yet, that'll be in a different video to come. Along with the Miata, like a full, you know, whatever video for that as well in its current setup and, and what parts I will be installing on it very soon for uh, upcoming track days. But anyways, uh, thanks for being here today and I'll catch you guys later. This is just going to be a test vlog. I'm not looking to go really in detail with a lot of things. Um, mainly want to test out uh, how this audio and the video quality will come out when I pull it up on the computer here in a little bit. Um, but a little bit about myself. Uh, big car enthusiast, mainly Miatas now. Um, when I first got into it all, I was a huge S chassis person. Um, I've had too many 240s, right? And I know that that's nothing to brag about, right? Because I probably could have kept the first two and been content. Um, but I get in this bad habit of just losing interest in a build and selling it just to say I should have kept that car, you know, and then of course later on I buy another one to do the same thing. This is a non-stop repetitive cycle. Uh, the one thing I love about the Mazda Speed Miata, um, the one you see on the Instagram, um, that's hopefully going to be a forever car. It kind of hits all the criteria I'd like it to, right? You can go to a show and still look kind of cool. It can go to the track and be a blast to drive. And you can still drive it on the street. Granted, speed bumps are kind of iffy here and there. But other than that, it's got AC. It's got all the creature comfort. Yeah, Miatas, man. I could talk about those all, all day. Also, on top of being a car enthusiast, I love skateboarding. Nowhere near my prime like I used to be. I never was really that great. I also love snowboarding. Uh, granted, that was like my life in Virginia. When I lived there. I went to North Dakota. Didn't really get to do it a whole lot. It's actually pretty flat there. Um, and now I'm in Georgia, so again, there's not really mountains nearby. I'm on the very, very southern side of Georgia. Might as well be living in Florida. That's me in a nutshell, though. Uh, cars, skateboarding, snowboarding. Um, I love gaming. I love music. I love really everything except country. That's just not going to ever be a thing of mine. That's enough about myself, though. I do know that I want to cover my experience at uh, Road Atlanta. Um, I do want to cover a little bit about the car. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail there. I would love to get more involved with uh, helping out other Mazda Speed Miata owners because um, I think we all know the headaches involved with that car, right? It's Some people think it's God's gift to the NBs, right? But I look at it like some do, and it's just a glorified NB1 Miata. It's basically an NB1 with the facelift, a six-speed trans, beefier rear axles whatever um but for a car that most of the time you're only going to see probably 200 ish you know a little over 200 -ish horsepower um it gets the job done and with that being said you can get the same job done with taking an nb1 miata and just throwing a turbo on there i, I have a whole write-up on that um and i'll put the link to that in my description um where i took my previous not previous, but my first ever Miata was a 2000 LS package. Um, I did a whole write up, like start to finish, from making it NA to turbo, some of the things you have to do along the way. Of course, I don't cover like tuning or whatever. You can go find plenty of videos online with, uh, you know, simple mega squirt, you know, tips and tricks, whatever. All right, so I've kind of went off on a huge rant. I'm going to go outside now, kind of look over the Mazda Speed Miata, talk about what's going to be happening to it soon, and um, a little, little more detail here and there, so let's go outside. Alright, so here's the car that everyone, well, most of y'all are probably familiar with, right? It's a 2005 Mazda Speed Miata. Do not let the uh, fastback top fool you. This car isn't all really that special. Um, it's a lot of bolt-ons, a lot of uh, a lot of things that anybody could really recreate. 
you know, you could definitely duplicate or whatever, make something similar. Time invested, of course, yeah, and money. But, uh, I mean, I'm not going to go over everything right now. This is simply just a quick little walk around. Um, kind of just wanted to show you the car, you know, without Instagram photos, whatever. It's not perfect. There's plenty of imperfections all over the car that I know about. But, yeah, you can make anything look good in photos. Um, so here's some of the interior, right? It's very well kept. Definitely some love in this car, right? I don't try to really abuse it too much, but of course at the same time, it's, it's pretty reliable. And, um, you know, I'm probably gonna throw some clips in here from the track and I'll throw some commentary over those, kind of cover what was going on during the, uh, the track day. The one issue, and you'll see it in those clips, is that um, I was rocking my GoPro on the right side of my helmet. Problem with that is, I'll put this camera kind of where that would have been. So this is kind of the viewpoint you're going to see in those clips. Might be a different angle, I don't know if the GoPro and, and this camera have similar wide angles, but I did not take off my awesome Broadway mirror. The only noticeable mods besides the little enchilada kit you would see right now would be whatever this part was, I forgot the name and solenoid that sat here. I think it might have been like a boost control or some type of like detection valve that's deleted. Um, I'm running the manual boost controller, if you can really see it in the lighting right now. It's right there. Okay, so and that's sourced to the good old cold side piping. Not that I really needed to do that, but I just wanted to make sure it was gonna kind of push it a little bit harder than sourcing from the turbo, compressor outlet, whatever. Um, and of course my catch can set up, this is not pretty, right? But y'all seen some Miatas lately on YouTube that definitely need to set up their stuff a little differently for venting the crankcase pressure. Uh, so I deleted or blocked off this, right? I'm not using this whatsoever. Um, all my venting right now is happening through here. Um, the, so the Mazda Speed Miata, for the, the people that don't know, um, they already come with a factory style catch can. I kind of forgot how to set this up now. Okay, so this is the one that's allowing the vent to happen. It's draining down there. This is the other side of my vent, going all the way down this factory line, but this, you know, this is a different Miata, whatever, just be another hose off the factory line, down to here, and then down to my VMS catch can. These are awesome. They're made, well, via VMS performance, but they're made here in the States, I wanna say out of Florida. I'm hoping I can get this to be a thumbnail because I don't really know how all that works. I haven't posted on YouTube in a very, very long time. So, again, I'm gonna do a different video where I really, really dive into like every little detail of the car. Just a quick little recap, okay? So I'm gonna be ending the video here shortly. This is, again, my first test vlog, right? Using this setup. I'm hoping the audio comes out kind of decently. Sorry again that I mumble a lot. I talk kind of fast sometimes. I'm also very monotone. Those are all recipes for not a very good or uh, entertaining speaker um, that I'm working on. For those of you who are still around in this part of the video, awesome. I'm no pro, I'm no like technical expert with engines or anything like that. I'm a huge just bolt on and go guy. I don't have time for, I don't like having my cars on a lot of downtime unless it's absolutely necessary. But for the most part, I can say this confidently and I don't even care if I jinx it, but I've had 20, 30 plus cars in my lifetime a lot of them being modified or different or whatever. And uh, yeah, I've never had one, not one, actually like blow up. And that's that's actually uh, something to be thankful for there because I've never had to experience like, oh no, I gotta tear my engine down or source a rebuild or, or do whatever. All right, cutting the video here. I could talk all day, but that's not the kind of content people wanna watch. I don't even wanna watch that, right? I don't want people talking to a camera for 40 minutes straight, so. 
I'm going to change it up, and I'll uh, see you all in the next video.